in this hour and, and the app, we are going to speak a bit about interacting with AI. So what change when we don't interact with a, let's say, traditional, normal uh, user interface, but what happened when this user interface, whatever it is, or this system, this interactive system, is not anymore traditional, um, but um, it uses some artificial intelligence, so as some sort of autonomy on its own. Mm. And, and we, we will have a, a brief overview on, on this, <coughs> on this, on this topic. So, just to get started, since it's 8.30, which is to you the main difference between a person interacting with a non-artificial intelligence system and the same person interacting with the same system but empowered by artificial intelligence. Is there a difference? And if yes, which could be the difference? So one difference is the expectation that <coughs> the person could have uh, respected to, to interacting with a normal system. So it, I, I expect that this system behave more intelligently or differently than, less predictable than the other one. Other ideas? So the system is behaving sort of like a human, and so the, the user is, is, has difficulties understanding whether it's a real human or um, or, or intelligent system. So again, still in the domain of expectation, sort of, right? Because also have the expectation of the system is that it's behaving differently and more similarly to a human being. How many of you did uh, any AI course before? Here or elsewhere, it doesn't matter. Okay, and here, here at Polytechnic. And how many times in those courses the word human, person, people, individual, any variation of that was mentioned? Probably zero, right? Um, Okay, keep that in mind. Um, so let's start from an assumption that we can say that AI is everywhere nowadays. Mm? We have AI in the smartphones. We talked about uh, virtual assistant last time and either in these smart speakers, but we also have cars that uh, try to go around without a driver, a human driver that is driving them. Mm. Um, this is a, an actual car in, in the US from Uber. Mm. So it was actually doing the Uber service in for, for passengers. And we also have AI, here is something, uh, let me get the pointer. Here is something uh, related to medicine. Mm. So automatically try to classify some kind of issues or some degree, some grade of pr issues, medical problem. Mm. And we also have courses on AI, online courses, and systems that allow us with drag and drop to create classifications, mm, classifiers, to classify whether an object, a picture, contains or not something, etc. Mm. So this is our daily life, so we have, for instance, artificial intelligence in our pocket mm. with, a, an, uh, with Google Assistant or 
other system like this. But we, you, you, when you buy on Amazon, you get some sort of artificial intelligence in the recommendation that Amazon provides to you. Mm -hmm. Like other clients, like uh, other customers like you recommend buy these or recommend these or have seen these after this product. Or on movies, Netflix, for instance. Mm -hmm. This is the movie that is recommended for you. So we, we experience with some degree of AI, even if it's not the most, uh, let's say, extreme, like uh, something that is behave like a human. And when it works, actually, it is great because it's, it's helpful. But also, at the same moment, when it fails, it typically does it, does it in a spectacular way. So if you, if you, go, if you go on, um, on these two links, you, you can see um, amazing uh, failures by this AI system, one about Tesla, and the other, the other one about uh, Alexa. Mm? And so things like this happens. This is a Tesla, this is actual picture. Uh, that probably it was this smart summon, the smart summon in a Tesla is a mechanism for which you can, uh, so the Tesla is parked somewhere, and you can press a button on your smartphone and the Tesla move from the parking lot and comes to you autono autonomously. Hmm? So, cool, I would say. Hmm? And when it works, actually, it's very nice because the car starts moving without creating an uh, accident with other cars or without killing people, and so it's, it's really good. Uh, but other times, get stuck here, or in the, in the video there are more nice uh, illustrations. Uh, like the cars that continue to go um, back and forth in the same place for no apparent reason. Um, probably some uh, shadow on, on, this, on, on the road or something like this. But also these things happen. What, 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 what happened here to you in this picture? The car didn't see the driveway. Uh, no, the, but yes, yes or no. The car thought that the, the grass was the, the street. So didn't do the, the turn, but okay, I can go. And then get stuck here and, and get stuck th in that point. <laughs> and, and the person should have uh, go in or uh, push the, the, the car outside of this, of this point on the street. So this is to say, again, we, we have AI everywhere, and sometimes it's working, it's working well, sometimes it fails, it fails and actually it, it fails well um, in, in a way that is, actually these two videos are more like uh, for, for fun, for amusing, uh, like, oh, let's, let's blame the Tesla for not doing uh, the right thing at the right moment. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <coughs> and this is the fun part, but then there is also other occasion in which AI uh, is not just fun, it's not just the, a car that gets stuck on, on a piece of grass and you can unstuck it quite easily, but also uh, more create more problems. Mm -hmm. So in the first sen sentence here say that IBM uh, say that its artificial intelligence system could outthink cancer. Mm -hmm. and Others say that computer system that read X-ray will make radiologists obsolete. Mm? So AI can easily, according to these two claims, one from IBM, so not the first person that goes into the street, uh, said that their own AI system that they built a few years ago can either replace a doctor or a radiologist mm? because they will be able to automatically um, replace a person and do the work better than the radiology. And they also did some experiments, not that they just wake up in the morning and say this. Uh, so for instance, uh, there is this story here, and there is a full, a full link here, in which they, <coughs> as, um, uh, uh, one of these producer of medical system with AI in it for radiology, deployed the system in a hospital. And, and they checked with the radiologists whether this X-ray system uh, detect issues or not, and they had outstanding results. 
Mm? So the automatic system were doing a better job than the person. And so they say, great, it works. We make, made radiologists obsolete. <coughs> what happened ne next is that they tried the same system in another hospital. And in, in the other hospital, the system basically stopped working. Didn't get one right prediction of a radiology. Why? In one hospital, it was working perfectly. In the other one, it's not, we're not working at all. Like guessing, yes, it's, it's a problem or not is a problem, like these kind of things. A hypothesis of why this could have happened. The same algorithm, same system, same software, two different places. Radiology, sa same X-ray methodology. Mm. He was looking for X-ray and try to identify whether there are problems or not. Not in that case, not bias, not in that case. Could happen in other system, in other, pro in other in other AI system, bias is sure a problem, but not in that case. In that case, it was more stupid, let's say, the problem. The system didn't learn to identify, well, what they discovered after is that the system didn't learn to identify the problem on the, the X-ray. The system identify some pictures, some logos, some wording on the X-ray. And occasionally, in the first hospital, when the, 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 the X-ray results with issues add that logo more prominent, or that wording present, and the other, the one without issues, doesn't have that, that logo, that wording, that, that thing. So actually, the system learned to recognize whether this logo were present or not. And coincidentally, in the first hospital, it worked. In the second hospital, they had a different machine that didn't put the logo or the wording on the X-ray. So the system wasn't able to work. Hmm? So in the first hospital, they didn't recognize a problem on the X-ray. They recognized a picture uh, on the corner of that X-ray or something like this. Hmm? And changing machine, same algorithm changing machine, they stopped working because actually they didn't recognize the, the problem, the medical problem, but an artifact on the X-ray result. And they discovered this after, hmm? after a while, because they used one hospital for training everything. So in that hospital was working and they had no problem. And they didn't think to go deeper, it's it working. Why, why bother? Hmm? And so here, for instance, a uh, made prediction based on factor that have less to do with the disease than the brand of the machine. That was the case. Hmm? Uh, or the time, something happening. Hmm? Maybe you got more positive results when, in, in the afternoon than in the morning, so the, the, the system is learning to recognize if it's morning or afternoon. And again, coincidentally, it works, because in that place, things worked in that way. Hmm? Uh, <coughs> and yes, then there is problem with bias, with discrimination. Hmm? Uh, there are software for recruiting people that discriminate according to, um, that was trained, let's say, with white people, uh, maybe preferably male, so when you get uh, non-white people, when, what person, uh, or, and or not male, it stopped working. Hmm? So also discrimination of this kind of thing. And to you, wh why this is happening? This is not an, uh, uh, an algorithmical problem. Hmm? Think about the case of the X-ray. The X-ray was working. The algorithm was doing his work. It was predicting among two classes, disease or not disease. So actually, and they gave to, to the system X-rays annotated 
So they did everything in textbook. Hmm? Why this is happening to you? And this is linked to, to one of the questions that I asked you before, actually, but not only. Any idea on why these kind of things happen? It's almost impossible to interpret how an AI, what an AI is doing. Yes, not almost impossible, but that could be one reason. And, and one possible, actually, yes, is that, so without going into, into deep to this, but is that the typical approach for AI system is, is this one, so the, the most impossible part, no? That you, you get some data, you get some instances, and then you, you have some algorithm that does this AI magic. It clearly, it's not magic, hmm? but just to say it's a black box in which you put something in it reasoning about things. Hmm? Okay, this is the data. I clean the data. I cure the data. Hmm? I select the data. And also, I have instances. These are uh, X ray with disease. These are X ray without disease. I give the system quite a lot of instances for recognizing properly one thing or the other. So I'm doing everything perfectly well from the data and instances um, point of view. But even in this case, at a certain point, the typical approach is let's take these, let's put these in this black box, let's apply some algorithm, uh, and let's get some prediction or result. This is a typical approach for uh, data-oriented artificial intelligence. The thing that more or less is what was followed in these courses, right? This is a simplification, clearly. But essentially, you get a bunch of data, you get some uh, objective, and you have some algorithm to choose for. Do you want to do classification? So you can use A, B, C, D, F. And you want to do clustering, and you are doing to do the other things and supervised, unsupervised learning, you have to choose what to do. Um, so this is, could be one possible problem, and one possible reason on why this happened. Hmm? So the person in this hospital did everything correctly from the date, probably correctly from the data and the instances, uh, and they probably didn't check well whether these, that those results that came out here depends from the brand of the machine or other kind of things. They discover it as soon as they move the system to another place with another machine hmm? or in another place. Hmm? So the, the algorithms work well, apparently. Get some input, get an output, and actually outperform the radiologist in those cases with that specific data and those specific instances. And wh what is missing here? Now th that is easy. Now this course is called human-computer interaction, so what is missing here? The human. Actually, the human, there is, is just not included. Because the human is the one that selects the algorithm, is the one that trains the algorithm, is the one that probably provi provides data is the one that checks the results. There, is, there are humans here in the process. They're just, let's say, ignored. Mm. So AI, the, the AI community, currently is most, more focused to work here, mm. or work here on data to create better data without bias, starting from biased data, how to get unbiased data without clearly doing, okay, this set of data is wrong, let's pick up another one that could probably solve bias in some cases. Mm? It's more interesting working here, how we can do this algorithm 1% faster than the previous one, or 1% 1 more precise than the previous one. And that is good, I mean, it's not a problem. Uh, it it helps us to have 
AI system on the phone with respect to have uh, to, to need a cluster of computers to do a calculation so it's actually good but in the moment in which these things are put in the real world let's say real problems come in and typically real problems are brought by people mm, interacting with these results messing with the data or challenging assumption made here or here mm. because one thing is staying on the desk of a computer or on, on a room and other things is staying in an hospital mm. and watching x-ray of people that get sick mm. in different places of the world mm. so algorithms are not only or not always the answer mm. and actually there are they they are needed clearly for ai because why not um, but <coughs> uh, there are some situation in which you which an algorithm doesn't have the answer so if you go on netflix for the first time never been on netflix before and you have the recommendation on netflix that show you what to watch after what is going to show you you, you never watched anything on the platform how can predict I can suggest anything. Hmm? So this is an actual problem for, for AI, for recommendation system. It's called um, cold start problem. Uh, I cannot start recommending because I don't have the elements, the data personalized to you for recommend. And there are tricks for avoiding this, like asking for categories to movies, to people, okay, which this kind of category do you prefer? And so I can pick some movies from, from that pot. Or give, tell me which movies you have seen, and so I can show you other similar movies, or movies that other people have, have seen similar to this or after that. Hmm? And so, but you, the system there is not yet ready to recommend. So you're asking information, not the information that typically use, that is, the movie that a person watched, but other kind of information mm, to get started, to start to recommend something. Mm. So there are also problems in algorithms like in, in this case. Mm. Then there are possible solutions, but they are not involving the algorithm per se. They are involving how people can provide data for the recommendation. Mm. And so a suitable user interface in many cases is critical to overcome some limitation. Um, <coughs> so keeping people involved and consider them since the beginning, again, in, in that architecture that we have seen before, people are, are not present, but they implicitly are because the developer, the selector, the data analyst, and then the, the user of those results and the producer of the data are typically people, but they are not trained they are not uh, used to think about people. Mm? They are used to think about data. How can I clean the data set? How can I create an algorithm that is better? I can now increase precision, recall. I can avoid this problem or the other, but not how, if this result is 1% better than the other, does it matter in practical way? This is not a question that typically people that work with the creative AI system ask themselves. Mm? Then there are clear exceptions. And, and here there is another example of an AI system with a user interface that is helping to augment the algorithm, to help the algorithm do better Mm, so this is the face ID, one of the face ID setup on the iPhone. Maybe not the last one. So when you brought a new, a new iPhone, mm, you, you see your screen and you move that and you have feedback from these green areas and it follows you a process. It asks you to follow a process to complete the scans so that the phone at the beginning is able to recognize you since the first day. 
And then every time that you unlock the phone, but this is totally invisible, every time that you unlock the phone, it takes a new version of your face and inc increments mm, the capability to recognize you. So if you change your haircut, if you change your eyeglasses, etc., it's it's still able to to recognize you. Mm. But for beginning, you you need to to teach the system who you are, mm, how you look it, look, and this is guiding you. And this is again a user interface that is helping you to, gav to give the system, the algorithm, the information that the algorithm needs. Mm. So the algorithm doesn't need just a still picture, but it needs a 3D, mm, let's say 3D representation for which you uh, need to move around. And if you didn't move well enough, it asks you to redo that. So that you have the data and you have the results, but also you have a good quality of data. So it's helping the user. It's asking the user the information that it needs, that the algorithm needs to do a better job. Okay. And it's doing it in an interactive way. So what is different, and we have said before, expectation, but <coughs> one, the, one of the main differences is that AI systems are typically performed under uncertainty. So they are not certain. Mm. A, a traditional user interface, if you click on a button, 100% of the time, that button should provide the same result. Mm. Uh, an AI system, even if it sees the same data, you cannot be 100% secure every time that you get the same identical result. Mm. So the Tesla was trained clearly with the grass and streets. But then here, got stuck. It's not that they ne thought about the possibility to have grass close to a street. It, they did. But in this case, maybe the color of, of the sidewalk, maybe the, the, sh the, the shadow, maybe the sun, maybe the luminosity, maybe some reflex, reflection around, other factors mm. that are difficult, impossible to recreate in a close environment or to consider from day one mm, came in. Mm. So this uncertainty, this thing that sometimes things can go wrong, possibly not wrong enough, but can go wrong, mm. is something that an AI system should be able to communicate to create the right expectation from people also. Mm. And so this unpredictable behavior can be either disruptive, confusing, offensive, or dangerous, mm. if it is not just stuck on, on, on the grass, but it kills someone, for instance. Mm. And, and this, for instance, in the Tesla, is not even communicated to the user. Mm. Uh, so let's, mm. let's consider some errors or example, example of errors, easy error, let's say, that an AI system could do, mm -hmm. interacting with a person. Then with the idea that when you de design a system, an AI system that is interactive, you should keep in mind this kind of error. So there are relevance errors. Mm -hmm. You travel for a funeral and got an Airbnb for sleeping one night, and the Airbnb app is suggesting you fun local activities to do. It's pertinent, right? You go in a new place, and the algorithm is suggesting some fun local activities to do. It's good. But you are traveling there for a funeral, so maybe you are don't want to have so much fun in a place. So are those suggestions relevant? for the specific context that the user is in? Probably not. Mm, this is a relevance error. Um, or probably you, some of you experiment this, you are in a long car trip or on a plane and at a certain point your phone or your smartwatch say, oh, it's time to get up and walk. Yes, but I'm sitting here driving, I cannot go get up and, and walk in the car because I'm driving. 
I cannot even stop every hour to just stand up one minute for because you like it for uh, for getting uh, um, a prize to, to me at the end of the week. Mm? Again, missing context, missing relevance. And it's not that, let's take an example of the car, it's not that the smartphone is not able to understand whether you are in a car or not. It can. Mm? Maybe not precisely, but it can give a, a guess of this. But even, it's asking you, oh, get up. And these are clearly low stake example, low stakes error, not, nothing critical, nothing really terrible. You can ignore that and everything is fine. You probably didn't even notice that. And also, uh, multiple user similar inputs. I create a system that can be used by multiple people for streaming music like Spotify. And here there are three examples. I use my Spotify account to play 1970 pop jams at a thematic party. There is a 1970 party and I, I, I'm not, but I, this person could be the DJ there and use Spotify to play those thematic music for those years. And then you go home the day after and use your same Spotify account to play your favorite studio jam at home. And then uh, you, you, you have a friend and you, you use the same account to A to listen some artists that you both dislike. Mm. Or other things like that. Uh, at the end, what music should Spotify recommend to play? 1970, your CD jam, the artist you dislike, Again, even in this case, uh, multiple users, similar input, but again, multiple context, same input, playing music. Mm. So again, also in this case, Spotify doesn't uh, understand nor ask for the context. Just, oh, you have listened to this, so you will be interested in that. I'm recommending a playlist for you. And it's maybe a 1970 music playlist that you are totally not interested in, but you played for three hours, for four hours because of a party. So this has nothing, let's say, terribly wrong in general or wrong with the algorithm because it got some input and got some results. Good. I, I suggest music according to the music that you listened before. And I, it did the work. Just can get a lot confused. Again, this is nothing really uh, different from what we have said, seen before, uh, except this unpredictable part mm, for which Spotify could recommend random things at that point, things that you are not interested in, making the function of recommendation quite useless in this point because basically it recommends things that you are not really interested in. So you are not using that function mm, because it, it's a mess at that point. Mm -hmm. the music that the system recommends. Maybe in a week, in two weeks, in three weeks, it will be better, but in that moment, it's a useless feature. Mm -hmm. It's a useless AI-powered feature that if you didn't have, probably it was the same for these specific cases. Mm -hmm. So again, considering how, it's nothing totally new for, for, for you in this course, but considering how people can use your system in their activities, in their context, also here is central mm. to minimize and give more value to the AI system that maybe it worked well and per se, and it was well de developed and is efficient and etc. cetera. Mm. So these are <coughs> low stakes errors. So easy errors, the one here in the middle. Mm. So the feature is annoying or interrupting or it's often wrong or became useless in some specific context. And then our easy example. But same kind of problem may happen for high stakes mm. for which AI causes harm uh, or reveal information that someone wants to keep private 
or show offensive content. Hmm? And if you are developing, if you are selling a product with that, hmm, and it's maybe your product, hmm, you, you can have consequence either for high stakes or low stakes issues. Your user could stop using your product because of the poor AI performance and move to a product that instead consider context, consider humans in, in the beginning because simply it's not working well. Hmm? Or if you are really important, you can have bad press hmm? or legal troubles, especially for the high stakes. If your system is, is discriminating in the hiring process, you can also get legal troubles because you deploy the system that is discriminating. And again, algorithmically, we assume that everything was perfect, precise, efficient, with a good data set, etc. But yet, just thinking about the black box can cause this problem. And well, bad reviews, uh, discouraging others is similar to, to the first one. Mm. People stop using or don't install, buy whatever your, your application, your system. Mm. So these are the two kind of stakes from a user perspective, the high stakes and the low stakes. The first one are clearly more critical, the other one are less critical. Uh, but even saying that, actually, by default, AI system can violate the guidelines, the heuristics that we know. Hmm? For instance, consistency or error prediction due to their part of the expectation and part of this uncertainty in the results. Hmm? You cannot be consistent. I don't know if I have an example later uh, here. You cannot be consistent because you are not consistent by design because you are improving over time. So you cannot be exactly consistent. Hmm? And, and sometimes you cannot prevent errors because you want maybe to learn from an error. So some guidelines don't really apply 100% to AI system due to these characteristics of AI system. And so here there are two examples of um, inconsistency. Uh, for instance, auto-completion system. You type some word and you get the words completed. It may respond differently to the same input over time because the system is improving. Maybe you, are, you type always or often the same thing, so it try to, at a certain point, it try to facilitate, to give you the word that you are typically typing and not the, the standard word. But at the beginning, it starts from a list for probably most common word. And then after use the system, the system is learning and it's suggesting the words that you are using most frequently. And so the input is changing, the suggestion are changing. Even if you type, type always the same input. And, and this is consistent and this is good. This is by design and we don't want to have consistency here because you are removing the, the intelligence, let's say, from, from the system if you put the consistency here. Mm -hmm. You didn't give personalized suggestion, you just give standard suggestion. Or different com behavior from one user to the other. If you go on Google, <coughs> in in, if you go in parallel on, on, your, on Google uh, with your Google account, and uh, search for the same word, or for the same sentence, you will get a slightly different result, one from the other. So different user, same system, different result. Maybe not totally different, but slightly different, yes. Maybe some people will see the definition of a word, other people will see the Wikipedia page, other people will see other things as the first place at least. Again, personalization, so inconsistency among user. It's, you cannot say is the first link that you find on Google when you search for this. 
because for the other person it could be not the first link it could be the third or it could not even be in the first page hmm? so and you cannot say oh you're making an error because actually you are not because in the system it is designed that way to be personalized on you hmm? that is most of the interactive AI system are for personalizing either for replacing people or for personalizing people uh, results suggestion recommendation etc so how can we design interactive AI system hmm? that could be a totally entire AI system or just adding a recommendation component in your graphical user interface doesn't need to be everything AI just also portion for that so actually uh, someone like this this person here but it's not the only one <coughs> say that AI a human computer interaction is also this is also why we we are talking about this in uh, in this course at the beginning uh, we're actually very close field but they, then they can divide it over time and clearly the focus is different but they are not so different hmm? one from the other so these persons say uh, both AI and AI explored the nexus of computing and intelligent behavior and in a way it's true hmm? in human interaction you try to find new way for people to interact more efficient way to people with interact with a system and AI, AI is trying to give more intelligence for to, to the system so that is easier it could be more useful it could be more precise it could be so it's not so different mm, in theory mm. in practice this was uh, a clear separation and it is still difficult for HCI people speak with AI people and vice versa this in general in the world um, and but there are works at the, at the intersection of AI and HCI since a lot of years ago actually but more recently like in 2020 hmm? there was this new trend that tried to put together HCI and AI also as people working on this problem uh, and it was called by, by Ben Schneiderman that is one of the of the person that one of the author of the book of HCI that we mentioned in the first class that say that we need a human-centered AI hmm? so an intelligence uh, artificial intelligence that is human-centered that consider people in the various steps hmm? that doesn't forget or deny what they already doing the, the AI system but just considering people shifting perspective hmm? adding other kind of consideration that does not precision recall etc and the goal should be amplifying, augmenting, and enhancing human performances so that, not just because it's good, but amplifying, augmenting, and enhancing people performance so that the system could be more reliable, safer, and more trustworthy. Mm? That is also mm, a goal for an AI system to be reliable, to be safe, and to be trustworthy otherwise people will not use it if they don't trust it if they don't have a right amount of expectation hmm? so what is suggesting is that we need to shift from measuring only algorithmical performance to evaluating human performance satisfactory with a human centered approach with the same approach that we we have seen here in this course actually we cannot apply we have seen all the guidelines but we can use the same approach we can find with, with our the need before deploying a, a recommendation system we can understand where a tesla could be used in the wild before deploying a software that unpark the car automatically it's not that it's not needed maybe the feature but it needs to be probably better understand understood and contextualized and this is also true for evaluation clearly and <coughs> and so what okay this is an exaggeration but the, the great dilemma uh, among 
uh, let's say AI and uh, And, and the usage with, with human is we should automate as much as possible or we should augment the user as much as possible. So uh, Schneiderman here say that human-centered AI should amplify, augment, and enhance. So he's betting on the augmenting part. So clearly this is, again, an exaggeration, and this is clearly... Um, a very opinionated slide um, that should make evident w what also I prefer between automation and augmentation. Um, but do you know well? Do you know what, what are these two pictures? Yes, no, maybe fifty percent. Yes, both, both. Okay, so what what is this? Iron Man. Iron Man. And why this is augmentation? Why this is an AI system augmenting people capability? Uh, yeah. he, he, the system help Jarvis in the first versions help um, the Tony Stark to control everything. Is also this is actually an, uh, uh, an armature, so it can also fly. So also augmenting capability in that sense. Normal people don't fly, right? Uh, but with that, you, you can. Hmm? And you can also shoot with your hand, and you probably see with zoom detail. So it's, it's a system that is also is fictional, clearly, but also augment human, human capability in this case. Hmm? Again, this is an exaggeration, but just to make the point. Uh, the other one. It's from Wall E, yes. The Disney movie or the Pixar movie, I don't remember. Do you know what is? Who didn't see Wall E? Oh, so you don't know what is. Okay, don't, don't, don't spoil the movie for, for the other. <laughs> but yeah, let's say, let's say in this way. In this part of the film, uh, we met humans that are traveling on a spaceship. And, and this spaceship was totally controlled by uh, an artificial intelligence system with robots, etc., that tried to ease the life of the people, actually. But as a result, they were, you see, not particularly fit. Uh, they were even able to walk because they are sitting on these chairs and this chair were doing everything for them. They want to eat, they provide food. They want to have amusement, they can. You want to speak, you are one close to the other. Do you want to move? Well, the chair moves. Uh, do you want to sleep? Well, the chairs bring you to the, to the bed and so you can sleep. Hmm? Again, also this is an exaggeration, but this is fully automation. The person doesn't need to do anything. Just be sit there and I'll be say, okay, well, I, I'm hungry, a duck, food comes. I want to drink and drinks arrive. So here again, exaggeration, but it's just to make a clear distinction between what we what can be perceived as extreme augmentation and extreme automation. Uh, so these were actually considered as opposite, historically. We either augment or automate. Uh, but two things. One, automation is not always bad. And two, in augmenting like this, you are also automating some part. Hmm? Because in, for, for Iron Man, he has uh, delegating some function to the, to the system. Hmm? So it has the system automate some behavior. Hmm? When the Iron Man flights, let's use this as an example, 
it has some degree of control, right? It can decide where to fly. It can decide probably how fast to fly. But it doesn't have to do anything else. It doesn't have to think about uh, the, I don't know, the, the, the assets or the flight path or if it's on the path or not, because you can say, okay, I want to go there, calculate the path. And this is automation again. Mm -hmm. So here actually is more mixing automation and augmentation, using automation to augment people. And this is the, the idea behind this human-centered AI. We can have high degree of automation with high degree of augmentation. Mm -hmm. And this is clear exaggeration, but uh, let's think of uh, two examples for which this is true. You have something in your pocket or around you that has a high degree of automation and high degree of control on your side. And there's some AI in it. Okay, it's something on the smartphone. What is on the smartphone? Which app? allow you to have control, fully control, but it has a good amount of automation. Any guess? Something more s simpler than Google Maps that is installed by default on every phone, the camera. Hmm? The camera gives you full control. You can control uh, where to shoot, when to shoot, how long to shoot, regulate various parameters. But if you don't want, hmm? it has automatic stabilizer for movement. It has regulation for luminosity. It has Maybe in some, in some smartphone, it takes multiple photos and then try to put together the photos to give you the best quality of the photo. Uh, shoot the normal photo and the HDR photo. And this is uh, all, all things that you don't, don't select, don't control, or don't care to control. Because you want to do the best photo that the smartphone can. And so it's optimizing things for you. You can disable things clearly, you can, but you have to decide when to take the photo, who to, to shoot for, when, how long, it's a video, it's a photo, it's a portrait. You, you have control. It's not doing photos by itself, clearly. So it is a small example, but it's a good example of balancing, clearly m way, small, way smaller than Iron Man, uh, of balancing automation and augmentation, control by the user. And an example in which automation is actually very good and very useful. So the idea of automation is replacing people. No, no, because this is helping people, it's not replacing. smart home device, closer, almost there. Which, maybe it's not smart home, home device, which home device could, could be helpful? What about a cleaning robot, like the Roomba? The, the, the cleaning robot is clearly replacing you doing that activity. And you typically don't say, oh no, I, I want to clean my house. But if you have one of these things, you say, okay, it's doing the, the job and until it, it, it's everything clean, I'm fine. It can do whatever it wants. It can choose whatever path it wants. But the important thing is that the house is cleaned at the end. So this is one example which you probably are happy to be replaced by um, an object. Because it's actually replacing you. You don't have to clean because it's, you have a robot to do that. Hmm? So actually there are, and, and you have very few control on it. 
you can just start it and stop it and maybe put it on charge at a certain point. But you don't decide what it cleans, which are the paths. You just move it probably in a room and say, go. And, it, and you end it at. So this is a good example of automation. Okay. <coughs> so which are the ingredients to design interactive, interactive system, keeping in mind that the goal could be either having aug augmentation. So the goal is always augmentation. It's always helping people. It's always augmenting people, first of all. Then there are cases in which automation is good, is comfortable. But typically, mm, for most interactive system, is more augmentation, but with the goal to having this high degree of automation, with this high degree of control, monitoring, uh, uh, augmentation. So mixing the two things together. Mm. So how we can design? Four things to keep in mind. Well, first of all, following a human-centered process, like the one that we have seen here, in contrast to a data or feature or only oriented process. Mm? So start from the people that will use your interactive system. Mm? Clearly, this doesn't really apply if the system is not interactive or doesn't communicate anything to a person. If it's just working on its own mm, for another machine, maybe, is not maybe so, so important. Mm? But if it's interactive, and as people at the beginning, at a certain point, it, it should follow a human-centered process, not a data or feature-oriented process. Then if you are creating such interactive system, you have to decide when, as they say there, to AI or not to AI. Hmm? Because maybe you can add AI in your system, but maybe there are parts of the system that are probably work better without AI or current AI. Understand and decide when to automate, so replace the user, and when to augment the user capability. If you are doing a cleaning robot, probably go with augmenting, uh, automating. Uh, you are doing other things, like the Iron Man armor, probably go to augmenting. Um, and then balancing uncertainty of the system with proper expectation and feedback. So again, expectation comes back here. So first step, to AI or not to AI? Hmm? What this is taken from Google. So actually Google, Microsoft, and the Apples have all guidelines or guidebooks or principle for human-centered AI or human AI interaction. All the three major uh, players have these guidelines. Hmm? So Google call it the people plus AI project, payer, Microsoft call it uh, human uh, artificial interaction or human, ar uh, human AI interaction or human AI experience, um, and Apple has it in, in the guides for, for developer. So it's in interacting with machine learning, something without a specific name. Mm. And this is taken from the Google guidebook. So this Google Payer guidebook. Uh, that say, they say basically, after identifying user needs, so these, just these slides are taken from Google. Uh, after identifying user needs, need finding, and understanding how you can solve those needs, so which are the things that you are needing, ask yourself, can, for each of the need, can AI solve that need? in a unique way, and why? Mm. And Google give you a checkbox. Mm. This Google project give you a checkbox. They say, okay, AI is probably better when the core experience requires recommending different content to different people, or when you have to predict future events, or when you want to use natural, or need to use natural language processing. You, you need AI to for natural language understanding at a certain point. Or the user experience don't rely, doesn't rely on predictability, etc. Instead, 
AI is probably not better mm, when the, the most valuable part of the core experience it is predictability regardless of context or additional user input it should work in that way always so why bother to put it an AI system in it that always give the same result mm. it could be fancy but it's totally useless or when the cost of errors is very high and outweighs the benefit of a small increase in success rate when when it's a high nice stakes situation hmm, as we defined before avoid AI when user customers or developers need to understand exactly everything that happens in the code or with the application if you need to have a 100% understanding of what, we, what things work, you cannot use, it's saying Microsoft, or it's better not to use a data-driven AI system, etc. Or, well, when people explicitly tell you in the defining phase that they don't want a task either automated or augmented, or when it comes out from the defining phase. Maybe you want to do that intelligently, but you, you recognize that there is no need. Actually, if you do it intelligently, people will stop using probably your, your system, your application, so it's actually against you. Hmm? So this is the first step, understanding whether for each needs that we have to, to AI or not to AI. The other thing is to consider, when we decide to use AI, is to consider how the feature, mm, the AI feature, will be perceived by the user. Mm. So, which is the tolerance to error, for instance, of the user. And the tolerance here is a way that is connected to the reliable, safe and trustworthy as be of before. If user don't trust, don't think that the system is reliable or safe, th the system has issues, clearly. It, it's, it go against the idea of human-centered AI, and probably also of AI, because it stopped using the system. So. And this tolerance depends clearly on the feature, but also the role of the feature is important. Mm -hmm. So AI features could be classified in this way, on an interactive, again, system could be critical or complementary, could be proactive or reactive, visible or invisible, and dynamic or static. Mm. So you can have a feature that is critical, reactive, invisible, static, or a feature that is critical, visible, and dynamic, or proactive and invisible. Mm. So these are the, the categories for which a feature could jump in, in one or more of it. So what is a critical feature? A critical feature is a feature for which the uh, application strongly depended for working. Mm -hmm. So more critical the feature is, the more you need accurate and reliable results. And again, if you cannot give to a critical feature that level of accuracy and reliability in the algorithm, or through a user interface to get additional data to compensate issues or to guide in some way the results, then probably it's a better idea not to use AI. Again, as Google was saying before. Instead, complementary feature have a higher user tolerance because they are not critical for the, the application. So, for instance, Let's take two examples. Face ID, or face recognition for authentication of smartphone. Is it critical or complementary as a feature on a smartphone OS? Okay. We'll say critical. And who say complementary? It's actually critical, hmm? for, for, for probably the reason that he was saying. Hmm? 
because the feature per se is critical. The feature either work and work well, or nobody will use the feature. So it's not critical for the smartphone. But if you have that feature and that is not working well, why do you have the feature? Just ship a phone without the feature because nobody will going to use it anymore. So why wasting time to developing, adding, etc. that feature if it's not working? It's not working well enough. So it's critical in that sense. The feature is critical per se because if it doesn't work well enough, and then you have to decide what is well enough, clearly. The people will not use it, so it will be useless. So why, again, having that feature in the first place? Just use other, more reliable ways for authentication. Uh, word suggestion on smart key or smartphone keyboards, critical or complementary? Complementary. Other complementary, critical? Who thinks that is critical? Nobody. Yes, this is complementary because it's on the top of the keyboard and if it doesn't work well, well, you can type and ignore the suggestion. Right? The keyboard is continuing working without that. So if it's helpful, fine. It's not. Sometimes it will be helpful, sometimes not. It's not linked to authentication on a smartphone. It's more linked to typing, and probably you're fine also without suggestion, as a feature. Hmm? Proactive, reactive. Hmm? So the clear distinction is that proactive feature take the initiative. Don't wait for you asking something. Hmm? But prompt new task, prompt new interaction by providing unexpected, and this is also underlined, sometimes serendipitous, results. So at certain point, the system is asking you, do you want to do this? Unexpectedly, you, you are not interacting to reach that goal. Hmm? This is a system that proactively, but let's say sensibly, is suggesting you to do something. Hmm? That, could, that the system think in some way that it could be good for you. So reactive instead are more, let's say, more, the more traditional feature, the one that help you. So you are doing something and you have a feature that is very contextual in that moment and they help you to complete the task. Hmm? So it could be either intelligence because it recognizes that you are doing a task and provides suggestions, maybe like the keyboard, but it's, it's there. Hmm? You, you can use it or not, but it's there. It's not something that out of the blue say, oh, do you want to do this? Or something like this. Hmm? So, uh, Clearly, because people do not ask for the results for a proactive feature provided, that the proactive feature provides, they may have less tolerance for low quality information hmm, than a reactive feature. Because at certain point, you, something pop up in the application say, do you want to do this? So if, it, if this happens every minute with totally useless information, the tolerance is clearly low. Because why are you annoying me with this thing. I'm not asking you this. I'm not doing this task. And these are also not helpful. Why are you providing me this feedback, this suggestion, this next action to do? So proactive features are really interesting, but needs to be used with care. Hmm? Because they risk to be too much or too annoying. Yes. So you're saying basically it could be a special case for critical and complementary, I suppose. Yeah, no, the point is that that is still critical, and what you're saying is 
um, <coughs> it's, let's say, fall in the definition of accurate and reliable results. So in that context, one kind of results is more important than the other kind of results. In other contexts, probably you don't want false negative and false positive, or you want more for positive than negative and vice versa. But it falls in the accurate and reliable, clearly. Because if you have face ID at the end that is not working at all for with you, you, you don't want to use it. But similarly, if you hand your phone to, your, to the person that sits um, close to you and this person is able to unlock your phone with his face or her face, clearly something that you don't want to use it because it's not working as expected with the, the right level of accuracy and reliability. So all of that uh, is something that should be specified per feature, and in that case probably it's right what you say, but it falls in, in this how, what is this um, well enough, which is the level of well enough, which are the characteristics of well enough for that feature to, to work well, not to work, in some cases, to work well. What is this well? What means specifically this well? And this is, what you're saying is probably the, the details of this work well. And so I'm care more about this than less, but overall it should work as expected. Otherwise you're not going to use it. And so it's, it's critical in that sense. Okay, proactive feature, back to proactive feature. Uh, if you use Gmail, you have seen proactive features in Gmails. Mm -hmm. When you type an email and start writing something, uh, it suggests you the words. Mm -hmm. And you can accept the suggestion or not. And this is proactive because you are not asking for suggestion on the word, the word of the sentence. Mm -hmm. So proactive feature could be helpful a small amount at the right moment and if they are easy to dismiss, typically. So here I can ignore whatever it's suggesting and just type comma and go, go back to the, to the other, to the new line. Uh, visible or invisible, hmm? another characteristic of the feature. Uh, clearly the impression of reliability of results depend whether a feature is visible or not. So if the feature is visible, it's something that you use, you see, you interact with, uh, people form a stronger opinion about the reliability of the feature with respect of an invisible feature that maybe it works under the hood, in background, and it does things mm, like optimizing battery. Mm. Um, so it, it's more difficult for invisible feature to ask for feedback, to also get uh, com reliable, communicate reliability from people because people don't see the feature. The feature is something that, like in the camera, the camera is optimizing the, the results of the photo, but you don't see the optimization in progress. So until you are satisfied with the results, it can do whatever it wants. It could be sophisticated as much as you want, but you, you, don't, you cannot say, I'm, it's a reliable or not, it's working well or not, because if the picture in the end is fine, it's fine. And if it's not, you are going to retake the picture probably. And so it's also difficult for this kind of feature to give feedback. The other features that are visible that you are using are clearly easier to say, no, it's not work, it's not, not reliable, etc. And the last characteristic of features is dynamic or static. So the difference I basically is that dynamic features are features that automatically improve over time, like face recognition on the phone. So the more you use the feature, the more it should be better. It should be more accurate. So it changes over time. Or word suggestion in a search bar, auto-completion of word. The more you use the feature, the more the suggestion should be pertinent to what you want to do. Static features instead are features that sometimes improve with a new version of the system of the application or the interface. Hmm? Like for instance, the quality of face recognition in a photo application. Hmm? It will be in version one, 
it recognized some phases and on the other in version two the, the algorithm for face recognition within the application is really improved but it's not something that improved over time as you use it it's something that improved in the next version with an update of the application of the system etc and clearly you could have dynamic feature that also receives static updates over time to improve overall mm? but the difference that dynamic feature also change improve over time like suggestion mm? so such improvements clearly affects other part of user experience mm? dynamic feature often incorporate as we said before some form of calibration and feedback like for face ID you need to calibrate to help the, the system recognize your face in a specific way doing specific movement for movies at the first time for recommending movies at first time it asks you which movie you are interested with genre of movies you are you like etc to start hmm, with the dynamic process of updating the feature and the more movie you, you watch typically except the case for Spotify or those cases about relevance error that we have said before a multiple user a multiple input you get a feature that updates itself so it's dynamic hmm? so depending on the feature such update can modify the reliability safety or trustworthiness of a system think about Spotify is clearly the recommendation is dynamic but if you start messing up with uh, music because you can have the party plus the eight listening plus the you 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 have um, uh, you use Spotify for your study session you clearly are confusing the algorithm and so the reliability of that suggestion decrease in that specific moment of time then maybe increase after if you use in a more consistent way the application mm -hmm. but this is something that the designer the creator of that feature of the application should consider that may happen and which is the impact on the user of this mm -hmm. or on my application of this will the user will disinstall it we stop using Spotify and we'll go on Apple Music or not just for that reason mm -hmm. uh, and then as so th all of these could be combined so a feature could be critical and dynamic so face face ID we said is critical it's also dynamic because updates over time is also visible because you see uh, visible at the beginning at least and then becomes invisible because hopefully you will not even interact anymore with the feature just unlock the phone um, so change or th this could be different kind of um, slot in this categorization uh, but in general uh, <coughs> especially with AI system it's a good idea do not overuse feedback request mm -hmm. don't ask too often for feedback because the again expectation uh, the user expect that the AI system is smart is intelligent in some way hmm? so if you are continuing to ask feedback confirmation etc you give the idea that is stupid so why should I bother using something that is not really useful and I need to give to the system every single time the information that the system needs just let me do the thing instead of asking continuously should I do that I do that well etc hmm? and keep feedback for the high stake fa failures that we said before so the one that are really really critical hmm? and also for the critical features etc hmm? so for, for the more critical part so <coughs> briefly which tools we can have to apply this concept that are more close let's say to principle or to theory than not to specific tool so i said before that um, microsoft apple and and google have guidebook guidebooks guidelines so actually the two ai or not two ai is from google the classification feature was from the apple documentation and since we we are missing the, the third one Microsoft, Microsoft Research actually, uh, Microsoft Research is, is Microsoft, it's the same Microsoft, it's the same big company that creates Windows and Office, but it's the research 
component. Hmm? This is not the corporate that needs to, to sell licenses, etc. This is the research part that is quite independent from the corporate part. And if you complain abla about a product to the research people, they say these, these are not my job. Go to the corporate. So they, they like to keep this uh, separate. Hmm? So Microsoft Research provided, created this guideline for human AI interaction, and it's called it human AI interaction this way. And they actually provide a toolkit much bigger than just the guidelines with also examples, etc., to build uh, interactive AI system with some criteria and defines some guidelines in this, in this way of cards. They also have cards, physical cards, uh, that are colored and on the back you have examples of application of these guidelines. And they created these uh, 18 guidelines split in four phases. What could happen, what you should consider before so initially, when interacting with an AI system, during the interaction, when wrong, what happens when the system is wrong, and over time. So these are guidelines like the heuristics, you, they don't apply always every guideline in every case, but there are some guidelines could apply more than other in some cases than the other. And and the guidelines are like these. So initially, make clear how well the system can do what to do. So set the right expectation, especially for critical, if you want to uh, refer to the previous part, especially probably for critical feature, visible and critical feature. Hmm? So, and, and Microsoft did this example in practice of application of a good application of this guideline. It's a, the recommender in Apple Music uses languages such as we think you will use to communicate uncertainly. Not for sure you will like this music or this is the music for you, but we think that you will like this music. So to communicate uncertainly, so even subtle changes. And for instance, another guideline during interaction mitigates social biases. And then there is a brief explanation uh, ensure that AI system language and behavior do not reinforce undesirable, unfair stereotype and biases. So the predictive keyboard for Android suggests both genders um, when typing a pronoun starting with the letter H. So it doesn't have a bias toward male or female, but suggests both since you start typing in an H. Again, guidelines of things that you can, uh, this is another example about efficient correction that you experiment, they put the example of Bing, but in Google search is the same. So one click to correct an error of mistyping, and et cetera. Convey the consequence of user action as, as the other guidelines that we have seen, they are clearly well specified and ready to be applied. So you have a system ready deployed or you are creating a system and you can use the guidelines um, to uh, guide and consider things and look for things. So in a theory, in a way, you could also do probably some sort of heuristic evaluation using these guidelines if you have a AI system. Not for looking for usability problem, but for looking for problem in interaction with AI. So an expert evaluation using this guideline, for instance, instead of the traditional heuristic that we, we, we said that some of these don't really apply, like the consistency one, because you here have an inconsistent behavior by design in most cases. Hmm? So these are just some guidelines just to give you the idea that they exist. These are the link to the three uh, things that we were seeing before, the Google people plus uh, AI guidebook, the Apple human interface guideline for machine learning that covers the same, the same part, and the Microsoft human AI experience toolkit that includes the guidelines and other examples, and also in an interactive way to guide developer and design to create interactive AI system, more in a guideline, principles slash guideline oriented base. Okay, so. We are actually almost out of time. Any question?
No. Okay, so let's meet in, uh, for, for some of you in a few minutes in Labinf and otherwise next week, uh, later or, and or next week in class.